Hi everyone, it's Ellie here. I just got some information to share with you about Star Fox that you're probably not aware of. Okay, so um, let's just jump into this. So I just want to add that this is one of the Star Forts that I found in New Zealand. Obvious Star Fort. Looks like it's had a tsunami go over the top of it and leaving debris and they've come along and added to it, dug it out or whatever they've done. So that's that one. Okay, so now I've got to work out how to get <laughs> back into it. Alright, well, I just want to thank everyone that's currently listening, if you're still here with me. Appreciate it. Hit that like button so we can bump it up and share it around. Appreciate it if you subscribe. Alright, thank you. Go back. I don't know. Okay, bye. Okay. Coastal fortifications of New Zealand. Coastal fortifications, fortifications were constructed in New Zealand in two main waves. Around 1865, as a response to fears of an attack, yeah, by Russia, and in World War II, due to fears of invasion by the Japanese, the fortifications were built from British designs adapted to New Zealand conditions. They were typically included gun emplacements pillboxes, fire control, observation posts, camouflage strategies, underground bunkers, and sometimes some interconnected tunnels connecting magazines, supplying plotting rooms and protecting engine rooms, supplying power to the gun turrets, searchlights. There was also kitchens, barracks, and officer and CO quarters. The Russian star forts. Okay. Scare forts, sorry. <laughs> There's always a, a fall. Oh, this is just unreal. Okay. So in the 1870s, New Zealand was a young, self-governing colony of Brittany. It had developed no coastal def defences of any consequences and was becoming increasingly sensitive to how vulnerable its harbours were to attack by a hostile power or opportunistic raider. In the aftermath of the Crimean War, Tsar Russia seemed particularly suspicious. In 1783... 1873, an Auckland editor portrayed what has been hailed as the greatest spoof in the country's history. The Monday 18th of February 1873 edition of the Southern Cross reported the sudden declaration of war between England and Russia. As a result, the Russian warship Kowalski, whose very name should have been made sober readers suspicious, had allegedly entered New Auckland Harbour on the previous Saturday night and proceeded to capture a British ship along with the city arms and ammunition supply hold a number of leading citizens for ransom. The 194 men Russian vessel obviously meant business with a dozen 30 ton guns as well as a remarkably new advance in warfare. warfare. A paralyzing and deadly water gas that could be injected into enemy ships from great distance. The Southern Cross article created panic and the government commissioned its first reports on the colony defences. It is now clearly understood that Britain would protect its territories and vital shipping routes, but the defence of individual ports was the responsibility of each self-governing colony. The Russians declared war on Turkey in 1877, producing another scare. The decision was taken to construct the fortifications and purchase naval boats, which would protect the harbours at Auckland, Leeton, Port Chambers, the coastal artillery, fortifications, land batteries were to be based on British designs, and heavy artillery pieces, ammunition, were ordered from Britain. By 1885, the work started in earnest on the construction of what eventually become 17 forts. That's more than Australia. By yet another Russian scare. In 1885, the New Zealand government bought Ted Armstrong BL 8-inch, 13 Armstrong BL 6-inch guns on a disappearing carriages. The disappearing gun was the very latest in military technology in the 1800s, and it was disappearing because as it fired, the recoil pushed the gun back underground where it could be recoiled, loaded under the cover. Total cost of the artillery plus the cost of installation, including the land and in cup placements and placements magazines barracks was around 160,000 pound oh my goodness 
Following the second Russian scare, a number of RML 7-inch and 64PR guns were also installed. Okay. So, four miles, three miles, two miles. The forts. Okay, so we got North Head at Auckland. At Devonport, divided into three sub-forts. The North Battery to defend Matango Channel. South Battery with a seven-inch gun to protect the inner harbour. Fort Colliery with the eight-inch gun on the summit. Bolston Point, Auckland. Two BL six-inch guns. 1885 in Mission Bay. Not completed. Ah. Was it not completed or what? Not renovated properly. Okay. Fort Resolution, Auckland. Two BL 6 inch guns in Pal. Fort Takampana. Fort Victoria. The highest volcano on Auckland's North Shore, rising to 87 meters. On Mount Victoria, Devonport, the gun fired only once because of the complaints from the residents whose windows were broken. Fort Bellicence. There's a former coastal artillery battery on the Port Gordon on Wellington's Miramar Peninsula, Wellington. 1885-1886, Point Gordon at Miramar, Wellington's primary military fort until 1911 when Fort Dorset opened. Fort Gordon, Wellington, Fort Buckley. Hassel Battery. Crew Point Battery. It's located on the... East side of Point Haswell in Wellington, New Zealand. Fort Kingmine. Battery Point. Fort Jarvis. Oh, wow. Okay, on Ripper Island, on the south side of Lytton Harbour, often called Ripper, Fort Jarvis is an intentionally rare 1800s Russian invasion scare structure which has retained a high level of authenticity of both structure and hardware. Six and eight inch disappearing guns is all. It is one and only five examples of this type of fortification in the world. Oh wow, only for one of five. The island has been managed by the Department of Conservation since 1990. Spur Point Battery, Lawyer Head Battery, Ocean Beach Battery, St. Clair Battery. On the spur of Forby Hill above Second Beach, Dunedin, no remains remain. The area was cleared and subdivided for residential housing. Fort Tarawora, the headland of the Tyre Peninsula. World War II coastal fortifications, the second main wave of building coastal fortifications during the Second World War. This was mainly a response to received threat of invasion by the Japanese after the attack of Pearl Harbor. Now Pearl Harbor is a false flag, come on. From 1942 until 1944 when that receded, 42 coastal artillery fortifications or land batteries were either developed using historical fortifications or were built from scratch. So okay, they were already there. Using historical fortifications, they're already there. Uh, from the Zidish Times, radar was installed, allowing long-range shooting at night, and replaced the traditional fortress systems of range firing. And there's tunnels in the forts. Forts were fortifications were equipped with both old and new ordnance, mostly British. Some World War One ordnance was requisitioned for museums, and recognitioned. <laughs> I'll leave a link up in the description if you guys want to click on all these links and have a read. Okay, the fortifications were administrated by the Royal New Zealand Artillery, which grouped them into area four areas. Each was under the command of Heavy Artillery Regiment, 
Within each regiment, the fortifications were grouped into batteries. Seven of the now historic Rushevsky fortifications were also used. The nine and a half inch gun, Stony Barter. Stony Barter is the historic defence installation at the northeast end of Waukeed. Ireland, New Zealand it is sited with the 50 acre scenic reserve at the same time, owned by the New Zealand Department of Conservation. The park double serves double as historical and nature reserve. Upper North Ireland, under the command of the 9th Heavy Coast Regiment. So we got Montu Island, consisted of a battery camp, gun emplacement, pillboxes, and US naval magazines. It remains are administrated by the DOC. Department of Conservation, it's waypoint. North Head, oh my goodness, Russian Scare. Part of Auckland's coastal defence system for the Russian Scare in 1885 to World War One. By World War One, the ship's guns were able to fire long distance. The old fort was too close to the city and it meant to be defended. New batteries were to be built at Montepu, Castor Bay, Rohanga Parakara, and Waikiki Island. I apologise to the um, Kiwis for saying this wrong. And any Australians, I sincerely apologise. Anyone else there, apologise. Okay, Bolston Point is a coastal piece of land in Auckland overlooking the something harbour. The area is significant in New Zealand history as a site of protests on Murray against forced land annihilation in the late 1970s. Uh, located in Mission Bay, the fortifications were buried in the 1940s. And when the Michael Joseph Savage Memorial was built and effectively forgotten, underlying tunnels were later rediscovered. Great Barrier Island. Manukau, built by American forces and at the end of Harvey Road. It's approximately 100 metres north of Lighthouse site. This is an open fronted fortification, had one gun, observation post, inland accommodation at the end of Harvey Road, with only concrete pads remaining for some of the buildings due to the erosive nature of these compact sand hills. The gun emplacement was undermined and slipped down the cliffs in the early 1980s. According to local residents, the gun was only fired six times, cracking the concrete abutments. The island here. I can't say I don't want to see people. Another Russian scare. We're like up to 63 already. Also known, so to move to its training school, it's been under the care of the Castor Bay. Castor Bay is a suburb of Auckland, North Island, located between Milford and Campbell's Bay. Stony Battery, Matua Island, Wahangala, Bremhead, Brimhead, Lower North Islands, Palmer Head. At the entrance of Wellington Harbour, the abandoned gun pits were blown up in the late 1960s. The only remains are the underground plotting rooms, which are closed for safety reasons. Fort Dorset. At the inner entrance of Wellington Harbour, the fort was demolished in 1998. Fort Balance. The former coastal artillery battery on the Point Gordon of Wellington's Myanmar Peninsula. Fort Apu. A high land on a high headland above Makara on Wellington's west coast, protecting the Cook Strait. Fort was built in 1941, a battery operations post, and an observation post, a radar post with large barracks several hundred metres inland. Wrights Hill Fortress, 
a counter-bombarded coastal artillery battery in the Kauri suburb of Wellington, New Zealand. It was built between 1942 and 47. It's predominantly underground with numerous tunnels, leaking wall shelters, gun compartments, magazines, plotting rooms, etc. Bluff Hill at Napier, also seen as a station during Warhouse, although never a lighthouse despite being situated on Lighthouse Road. Trinky. And it looks Poverty Bay, Mature. So I'm going to try and look up these coordinates on Google Earth for you guys and um, look a bit deeper into all of this. You know, they were there before, obviously. Um, I think it was all the Tartarians. Over 400 men and godly head. Battery point. Port Jarvis again. I'll click on some of these in a minute. <coughs> Boomin Island. Post Office Point. Ward Island. Potts Hill. Smithfield Freezing Works, Westport, Battery Observations posters visible on Google Earth, Cobburnon, Grey District Council destroyed part of the site without consultation in 2007 to make way for a sewer line, as they do. Another one here. Lower South Island, Fort Tallera. Close to the Tallera head at the north Stephen tip of Otango Peninsula, restored and open to the public, includes what is believed to be the only 1889 Armstrong disappearing gun, remaining work condition in its original pit. This one here, we've got Tomahawk. Harrington Point, Cape Walbro, Bluff, post-war, the event of air warfare missiles made these forts redundant. Most were decommissioned by the 1950s. Godly Head continued because compulsory military training and the last fired gun in 1959. Department of Conservation has the remains of around 30 installations and land it manages. None of the forts fired a gun in anger, although 8 October 1939 at Battery Point at Lilton accidentally s sank a fishing boat, Dolphin, and killed its skipper. Okay. In 1972, the United States declassified a contingency plan for invading New Zealand. This plan was considered a 120-page intelligent document called the Naval War Plan for the Attack of Auckland, New Zealand. The intelligence for the report was gathered during a visit to the Great White Fleet to Auckland over the six days in 1908. The plan advocated Maku Harbour as the best um, invasion point and landing heavy guns on this island here and some shell the forts on the North Island. The plan was not very realistic and may have been an exercise to keep young officers busy, which allocated the Colour garnet to New Zealand as part of the war plan red. Alright, so let's click on some of these links and see where it takes us. I'll um, dig up the sites on Google Earth so I can show you guys so you just don't have to go and do the digging. Okay. Nothing really there. I tried looking online about these and I couldn't really see anything. Let's try this one. I 
I'd just like to say thank you to all my subscribers uh, for staying and being here with me on this journey. I've got some more juicy information to come. I've got lots in my head that I just, I don't know how to express. And this is the first time I've really sat in front of a camera and recorded. So, okay. Lies within the city. The Cape is home to a lighthouse built in 1864, colony over 100 Northern Royal Abatros. The only such colony in the habitat of the Mayan Island. Okay. It's um, the headland's name. I can't say these names. I don't want to offend the people. Um, but the headland having been established about 1650. And was still occupied by the Maoris in the 1840s. It was associated with a warrior. Nothing really there, just... Try and find that rocky one again, eh? Okay, we've got Wright Hills Fortress. Uh, it's a counter bombardment coastal artillery battle in the Conroy suburb of Wellington, New Zealand. It was built between 1942 and 47 and is predominantly underground. Numerous tunnels, interlocking wall shelters, garden cartlets, magazines, plotting rooms, engine room. Some points were over 50 feet underground. The fort was intended to house three nine, 9-inch, nine 9.2. The guns were installed and the fort never saw action. Okay, so it, this is probably one of the forts that was um, found and refurbished. It said back a while back that they refurbished them. Um, Wrights Hills Fortress is currently in the hands of the Preservation Society. And they actually used it by TV and film for the Fellowship of the Ring, Lord of the Rings. Sound designers used the tunnels to record echo effects for the Mines of Moria sequence. So, yeah. This is uh, Fort Balance, built 1886 to 1888 while into New Zealand. Part of the battery observation post can be seen above the barracks. Some down below. Four more coastal artillery battery on Port Gordon, built in 1885, following the fears of an impeding war with Russia. Goodness me, geez, they were busy back then. And then the Japanese, geez. Um, they looked to Britain for it. Fort Balance was the premier fort in Wellington area for 25 years. 1885 to 1911, used by the military over a period for 60 years. In the 1800s, the layout fort balance is largely unaltered and a good impression of the original 19th century fort remains. The fort is a permanent reminder of the technology used in the coastal defence network of the 1800s and is an early example of concrete as a building material. So, Fort Balance is a placement that can be truly called a fort. It's a fully self-contained unit. Greenhead, Greenhead, the East Coast, on the Northern and North Island of New Zealand, located at the end of a 30 kilometre long peninsula. Okay, so I'll jump on um, when we find them. I'll just pause this to save you some time. This one's pretty interesting. This is Wahanga Goa. Goa. Um, the harbour was the scene of one of the most notorious incidents in early New Zealand history. 
In December 9, almost all the crew and 70 passengers were killed as a Utu revenge for the mistreatment of Tiaria, the son of I can't say that, chief, who had been the crew of, in the crew of the ship. Several days later, the ship was burned out gunpowder was, after gunpowder was accidentally ignited. On the 16th of July, 1824, on the voyage to Sydney from Tahiti, the crew of the passengers of the colonial schooner Endeavour, Captain John Gibbs, stopped in in the harbour. An alteration happened, and the incident where the Maori warriors took control of the Endeavour and menaced the crew. The situation was diffused by the timely arrival of another boat by the chief, and the incident was initially, initially described by Reverend Tyman as mostly problem of a cultural differences, but in later years the stories become a perilous cannibal adventure that defined the Maori to European as barbarian savages. So, 1809, it killed a mate between 66 and 70. There's that number again, 66. See that a lot. Just wanted to show you quickly too, whilst that page is loading, if my computer does play up. This is Cargill's Castle in Dunedin. Come across this before, and it looks very old. Very old. Oh, and look at this tree. It looks like a wave has hit it and wiped it out. Do you know what I mean? Like it's had some force to do that. quickly show you stony battery um there's not much there it's just a double duty as a historical category one historical place nature reserve containing unusual rock formations and the, the fort i'll um keep going and you can guys just pause it and it's got lots of tunnels in this one too these are the tunnels that go down to it This is uh, North Head, New Zealand. If you guys just want to um, pause it, I'll just scroll down slowly for you to have a read. I'm running out of time. This is getting too long. So you guys can have a read. I'll just give you a quick read of these ones. I'll, I'll let you guys read through it. I can't say these words. I'm sorry. I'm just going to scroll down. You guys can have a read. Okay, this is St. Clair. I'll let you guys have a read of it. We got Blue Point Battery. I'll let you guys have a read. Okay, we got Fort Buckley, Wellington. I will quickly after this um, bring them up on 